And for six days we will go, go. and the seventh we will enter the body gates. In the city bright and fair, fair. we will sing hallelujah to our King. In, and for six days we will go, and the seventh we will enter the body gates. In the city bright and fair, we will sing hallelujah to our King. In the city made of gold, we will dine with the Savior and with the saints. Riding chariots in the gates, we will sing hallelujah to our King. In the city made of gold, we will dine with the Savior and with the saints. Riding chariots in the gates, we will sing hallelujah to our King. Dear brothers and sisters, are you ready to enter the pearly gates? In the city bright and fair, we will Sing hallelujah to our King. Dear brothers and sisters, are you ready to enter the party gates? In the city bright and fair, we will sing hallelujah to our King. We will sing hallelujah to our Let's pray, then we hear the word of God. Father in heaven, bless this university, bless this church, and bless everyone who listens to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, our message today is a small question that says, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Just one question we want to ask today. Are you doing what? Are you listening? Are you listening? Someone is giving you information, and that information is critical for your welfare. That's why the question comes to you today. Are you listening? It is a question to highlight the importance of listening to what is being communicated to you. When you are asked, are you listening, it's just to tell you that please listen to what is being said. Are you listening? Not necessarily because you are not listening, but just to say that what is being said is important. Are you listening? It is a question that sends you to dig out the meaning of what you are listening to. It is as good as saying, are you getting what you are being told? Do you understand what is being said to you? And so when you are asked, are you listening, it's a question that has a lot of meaning. Are you getting what that person is saying? Are you listening? Brothers and sisters, listening builds relationships and takes them deeper. If we look forward to a deeper experience, then we must do what? We must listen. Any relationship grows and becomes stronger because the partners are doing what? They're listening. When I was being trained on pastoral counseling, 
I was told that the most important thing I will do as a pastor counselor is to listen. Not to sit there loaded with the points on how to solve people's problems, but to do what? To listen. To be able to sit there and listen to somebody talk without knowing when they will finish talking. And when one day I went for pastoral practicals for clinical pastoral education in Kendu Bay Hospital, the supervisors were interested to observe that those of us who were taking up the assignment were doing what? And so they would walk around as we sat with the patient to see who is talking more, the patient or the pastor. And if it was found that you are talking more than the patient, you lose the points. Because what is critical is to do what? Is to listen. Relationships are built and are taken deeper when people listen. You tend to tell more to the one who listens. You tend to open up more to somebody who listens. But you know, many times we put, up, put off people quickly by our speaking rather than listening. And that's why we have come to ask today, are you doing what? Are you listening? Several things have been said about the importance of listening, and a lot has been written. I just decided to go to Google and ask Google, tell me something about listening. And there was hundreds of information about listening. I picked a few that I thought are of interest to us just to show us that the world understands the importance of doing what? Of listening. The first one I picked is by an author that is well known, Stephen R. Covey. This is what he says. Most people do not listen with intent to understand, but they listen with intent to reply. Sometimes when people are listening to you, it's not because they are listening. They are listening and you can tell the mouth is moving. They are waiting for you to keep quiet and they throw back the response. They are listening with an intention to reply and not to understand what you are saying. Stephen Covey, a writer of many books on leadership. Seven habits of highly effective people and that kind of thing. And he says that there is a lack of ability in many people to do what? To listen. Many people, it is a general weakness. It is a, a, an outbreak of a disease that people are, are unable to listen. If you told people that at the end of what I'm presenting, ask a question, there are people who will raise their hand before you finish speaking. That means they are not doing what? That means they are not doing what? They are not listening. There is another proverb that I found online which says, no one is as deaf as a man who will not listen. When somebody is anxious to speak and respond, they are deaf to everything that is being said. All they need to pick is the topic and they shut their mind and wait to give you their idea of the topic. Somebody else has written and said, most of the successful people I've known are the ones who do listening than talking. This is somebody who just wrote, I don't know whether it's true, but the person says, most of the successful people I've known are the ones who do more what? Listening than what? Than talking. And that's why we have come to us today. Are you listening? 
Paul Tillich. Now, Paul Tillich is known to you, and if you don't know him, it's because probably you are a sophomore and a freshman. But if you stay in school long enough, you should be able to bump into Brother Paul Tillich, a writer. And he says, the first duty of love is to listen. The first duty of love, if you truly love somebody, the first duty of love is to do what? Is to listen. And another one has expounded on that thought and said that listening is love in action. That actually, if somebody can listen to you, they truly love you. But when people are only concerned about themselves and not you, there is no love. And so how do you tell love? Love in action is when somebody is willing to listen, to understand you, to assist you, to get closer to you, to be of meaning to you. There is a power in listening. Listening is love in action. That's why we are asking today, are you listening? Another one says, one of the most sincere forms of respect is actually listening to what another has to say. That the most sincere form of respect you can show somebody is to do what? Is to listen. You know, if I'm speaking to you and you stand and walk away, is that rudeness or it's not rudeness? It's rudeness. To walk out when somebody is speaking. That is why for many years in the tradition of this university, you don't walk out when worship has begun. And I'm happy for years that this has been upheld. But I go to many other places of worship and somebody is speaking and people are going in, going out, going in, going out. That is disrespect. The highest form of respect you can ever show to somebody. Actually, the writer says the most sincere form of respect is to do what? Is to listen. Another one has said, be careful how you are talking to yourself because you are listening. This is deep. This is those ones which you just respond by saying, that's deep, that's deep. That there is a power in listening. That when you listen, whatever you listen to changes you. And so every time you speak to yourself and say, I think I will not make it this semester. I think this one is difficult. I think I can't succeed in this course. I think I will not make it. I think this can't work. Remember, when you are talking to yourself, you are also doing what? You are listening. So be careful what you say to yourself because you are listening to yourself. And the last one I picked out of hundreds that I could get there was that listening is not the same as hearing. And hearing is not the same as listening. <laughs> listening is not the same as what? Hearing. You can hear, but you are not listening. You can hear but you are on your phone catching up with your girlfriend who is in another university in somebody else's room and you don't know and they are chatting with you. And so you are hearing, but you are not doing what? You are not listening. Listening has to do with the hearing followed by understanding, acceptance, obedience and action if necessary. Listening is complex. You first hear, you understand, you accept, you obey, and you take action where necessary. Then truly it can be said that you are listening. And that's why the question comes to us today. 
are you doing what? Are you listening? If you are listening, you need to listen to that which is good. If you listen to good advice from parents, from teachers, and from wherever it will come from, you will excel in your studies. But you know you can hear without listening. You can stand there, and because you need pocket money to go back to school, and your guardian has to make a small speech about your grades and about your behavior, you decide to, to be there, you tap your leg, because you are just saying, finish, I need the money. You are not listening, you are hearing them. And when you do that, you don't make it in life. You need to listen. Even if you don't like it, listen. Understand. Even if it irritates you, listen anyway. If you listen to your partner, you will have a great relationship or know when to quit. If you listen keenly to your partner, you will discover that yesterday when you wanted to meet them, they were, they were sick. And the other day when you wanted to meet them, they had an assignment and classes had not begun. If you are listening. And another time when you call them, they say their phone was on silent mode and you saw that they were online on WhatsApp. If you are actually listening, you will know when to quit. You will not waste your time, but many of us are never doing what? Listening. Somebody is hanging out with members of the opposite sex, and they tell you, you know, for me, I'm very social. If you are not comfortable with somebody social, then maybe you have a problem. Really? You need to do what? <laughs> hey, you need to do what? You need to listen. The person is telling you, I'm a licensed player. And is masquerading as I'm social. Really? You can't be hugging me, hug that one, hug the other one. You walk with me hand on waist, walk the other one hand on the other waist, and you feel nothing you are used to. That's what you do in your home. <laughs> and there you are, just hanging on this person. The problem is that you are not doing what? You are not listening. Listening will improve many relationships. And listening will save us from wasting time. If you listen keenly, you will discover that the agenda of certain people is only bent toward sex. Every time they talk. I like your skirt. Why can't you even like the hair band? <laughs> and the discussion is always there. And you are wondering what is really happening. The problem is that you are not doing what? You are not listening, and many of us are never listening. So we hang around wrong places, wrong people, because we don't do what? We don't listen. That's why we just came to ask today, are you listening? Are you listening? The tears you will cry next month is because you never listened this week. If you listen keenly, you will tell that this is not going anywhere. You don't even need an expert to tell. Are you listening? When your partner is ever hiding their phone, when you arrive and it rings, they, and you just met last week, are you listening? When you look at circumstances around you, are you listening? Brothers and sisters, if you listen to the word of God, you will go deeper in your relationship with God. But many of us never listen to the word of God. We listen to the word of great preachers. We listen to the advice. We listen to people. We attach ourselves to people. But we never pick out and say, God is speaking to me. 
Are you listening to God? What is God saying? There is what your friends, relatives, and people you know have told you about the Sabbath. That's what they have told you. But what is God telling you? Are you listening to God? There is what you've been told, but there is what God is saying. Which one are you listening to? The question is, are you listening? Which day is the Sabbath? And you go and ask the people you rely on. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be any day. Yeah, even if it could be Saturday. Maybe it's in the Bible. But you know, that's not really a big deal. Mm -mm. Are you listening? Are you really listening? Do you notice the person is jittery? Do you notice the person is uncomfortable? Do you notice that all of a sudden the person has increased their anger and temper? Are you listening? You need to ask the right questions. Why do you seem to have a problem? I just asked a question. Are you listening? In our relationship with God, we are sure and certain that God listens. We are in a relationship with God, and in every relationship, both parties must listen. If one partner doesn't listen, there will be a problem. But the one who listens will still be better off in that relationship. In a relationship, both partners must listen. If one does not listen, the one who listens will still be better off in the event of anything in that relationship. Because whoever listens prepares for eventualities. And so in our relationship with God, I want to assure you, brothers and sisters, that God does what? Listens. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 9, verse 31. The Bible says that we know that God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does the will of God, then the Bible says that God listens to him. If anyone entertains sin and remains a sinner, God does not listen. But anyone who comes and says, I want to repent my sins, I want to end my sinful life, immediately God starts doing what? Listening. And that's why we are asking, are you listening? There is a guarantee that in our relationship with God, God is willing and ready to do what? To listen. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. The Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their what? You can see the version on the screen. And his ears are open to their what? To their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do what? Who do evil. And that is why the first part of every prayer must be confession of sin. Sin is the reason that blocks us from accessing God. And we need to confess sin. And God has given a guarantee that anyone who worships him, and today we are worshiping. That's why we cannot limit worship. That's why we cannot reduce worship. That's why the only thing we can do to worship is increase or leave it where it is. Why? Because anyone who worships God, God listens. 
And anyone who does right, who does the will of God, who is righteous, God listens. Anyone who repents sin, God listens. There is a guarantee that God listens. But what about us? When God speaks through his word, do you listen? The question we are asking today, are you listening? In 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 and 16, sounding more like the end of a story of the nation of Israel, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 and 16, reporting the behavior of Israelites. The Bible says, the Lord, the God of their what? Of their ancestors, sent in what manner? Look at that adjective. He sent in what manner? Persistently to them by his messengers. Persistently. God kept speaking through messengers because God had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Verse 16. But what did they do? They did not do what? They did not do what? They did not listen. They kept mocking the messengers of God. They despised the words of God. They scoffed at the prophets of God until the wrath of the Lord was against his people. And it became so great that there was no what? There was no remedy. How many ways has God spoken to you? God says in that verse that he sent messengers, he sent words, he sent prophets, he sent all kind of people. How many ways has God spoken to you? I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that every time you get a chance to hear the word of God, whether planned or unplanned, it is God speaking to you. It is not a coincidence. It is not a mistake that today you are listening to these words. It is deliberate on God's side that you are here to get these words spoken to you. But the question is, are you listening? God has sent relatives. God has sent neighbors. God has sent TV programs. God has sent radio programs. God has sent social media information. God has sent YouTube channels, such as the YouTube channel for Baraton University Church. But the question is, are you listening? God has allowed incidences and accidents and situations to come. Then through them, God speaks to you. Are you listening? God will not speak forever if we never listen. God will never speak forever if we never listen. And if we don't listen, someday disaster will overtake us. That's why we need to ask today, are you listening? In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. The Bible says that long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our forefathers by the prophets. God spoke long ago in many ways and at different times God spoke. Verse 2, Hebrews chapter 1. But in these days, these last days, God has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all three things, through whom also he created the worlds. Brothers and sisters, God is still speaking even today, the Bible declares. The Bible declares, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son. God is still speaking even today, 
the Bible declares. He has always spoken and he is still speaking. The question is, are you listening? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says, from childhood you have been acquainted with sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that God speaks through the Bible. What did I say? God speaks through the Bible. God speaks through the Bible. God speaks through the Bible. Are you listening when God speaks through the Bible? Through scripture, if we listen, we are taught. If we listen, we are reproved. If we listen, we are corrected. If we listen, we are trained. If we listen to scripture, we get into a deeper relationship with God. The Bible is God's message to us. Are you listening? The Bible is God's message to us. Are you listening? You cannot get into a deeper relationship with God if you are not listening to what the Bible says. And so I would like to ask you, do you read and study the Bible? Do you take time to study the Bible? Do we regularly come to the place of worship to listen to God when he speaks through the sermons that come to us? Or sometimes we get too tired, we take a nap. Or sometimes we get too busy to come and listen. Are you listening? Listen, brethren. Listening will launch you to a deeper relationship with God and a better life. I said listening will launch you to a deeper relationship with God and a better life. No, I'm saying, brethren, that listening will launch you to a deeper relationship with God and a better life. And so the question is, are you listening? I want to ask today, that is there anyone who wishes to start listening from now on? Let me see by the show of hands. You can put them down. Listening is not easy. And we need to pray for ability to listen. And so what we are going to do, brethren, we will not get tired. We still have seven minutes or so. We can spend that time with one friend you can go in a group of two or three. And each one says a brief prayer for God to help them to listen. And God to help their partners in prayer to listen. If we learn to listen to God, we will listen to each other. And when we listen to God, better relationship with God. When we listen to each other, better relationships with each other. We need to pray for ability to listen. Our dear Heavenly Father, forgive our sins. We thank you that you are very kind to listen to us. Teach us to listen to you. Teach us to listen to your word. And teach us to listen to one another 
that as our relationship with you improves, our relationship with other people will also improve. Teach us to listen. We want to pray for this country that the attack that has been reported in Nairobi, we pray that you may take care, that it may be resolved very soon and very quickly. We pray for those who are injured and their families that intervene for them, give a quick recovery. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you may save us from the evil one. Everyone who came for worship, we pray that you may bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.